I'll talk a little bit about the testing that we did. For those of you who are sending me hate mail saying, give me the proof, give me the proof. I'm working on it. Finding a lab that didn't have a conflict of interest has taken weeks. Weeks. The bad news, it's going to be a few more weeks. Every pet that dies or gets ill makes me physically ill, and I can't stand it. We're getting a ton of questions about the pet food testing that we have been doing. So I'm going to give a little bit more in-depth um, explanation of that. So beginning, for those of you who are not aware, beginning in January, I was notified of a lot of pet owners reporting very similar symptoms from their pets, all eating um, similar types of food. Originally, the reports that were coming in were related to Purina products. However, uh, since that time, since the early January, we have had very similar symptoms reported from many pet owners who are feeding across multiple brands. So we decided to create a survey um, to ask people what they're feeding, what the symptoms are, and try to get a better handle on what could be at the root of all of this. And we sent out um, samples for testing, and I'll get into that. So if your pet has any, the bottom line of this is if your pet has any symptoms that might match this, particularly if you have opened a new uh, bag or can of food, if the food has a bad odor, um, don't feed it. If the pet doesn't want to eat the food, backs away from it, is refusing their food, take that as a sign that there is something wrong with the food. Do not doctor it up to force them to eat it. If your pet is suffering with vomiting or diarrhea, particularly if it is bloody vomiting or diarrhea, that is a sign that there is something wrong. Please stop feeding the food immediately, no matter what brand it is. Um, we also have some animals that have seizures within a half hour of eating or break out in hives or intense itching. So the symptoms um, kind of fall in a couple of different categories. Some animals have had all of the above. Um, and so you might, if you think that you have a bad batch of food, please contact your veterinarian, please contact the FDA and fill out the survey. And all of those links are readily available on our social media. Um, and please check out previous videos about this. So we decided when this started um, that too many pets were being made ill and too many pets were dying. And we, I felt very strongly that we needed to get to the bottom of this and that we needed to let pet owners know that there is an issue and um, what they can do about it, which really is stop feeding the food. I'm not telling everyone that you need to run out and dump everything by certain companies. I'm just saying if your pet has any of the symptoms or is backing off the food, please change. Um, and that could be as simple as just using a different bag or a different can. So listen to your pets. Um, so we decided that we would just go buy some food and we would send it out for testing. And this is not cheap to do. We spent about $4,000 on our first round of testing. We decided that we would look for things that have been problems in pet food in the past. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the testing that we did. Uh, we did tests for heavy metals and um, there is a, a limiting, uh, level that they can get down to. Um, so sometimes we can't say that there's zero, but we can say it's less than what this particular lab's testing could go down to. So it's not that um, we got really high values on any of the um, heavy metals, but we also, on some of them, didn't get zero values. And I don't know that it's possible to get zero values kind of in any food stuff at this point, because we know that um, rice tends to uh, concentrate arsenic. Um, so there are certain things that are just concentrated by certain plants. And I think that expecting to get a zero um, is unrealistic. And that's why the lab doesn't even go down to zero. 
So there's a little bit of arsenic, a little bit of cadmium, a little bit of selenium. Um, none of them are above levels that are considered actionable or a problem. But I do want to um, I want to put this in perspective a little bit. So for instance, um, this is for what is acceptable in pet food from AFCO and also from NRC. So um, the, the NRC was the first ones that came up with sort of uh, guidelines for nutrient values in food for animals. And then AFCO has used that sort of as a guideline. But on arsenic, NRC set a level of 30 parts per million. AFCO set it at 50. That's a pretty big difference. That's almost double. Um, for uh, mercury, no, not that one, lead. NRC put a limit of 10 parts per million and AFCO raised it to 30 parts per million. I really ideally would like to see zero, but hey, you know, like I said, that's almost impossible. So then we also tested for aflatoxins. We tested for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 aflatoxins. Um, oops, sorry, 13. And again, we didn't get zeros on those, but we did not get actionable levels. The highest ones were um, fumonisins, but again, not at levels that should be um, concerning according to AFCO um, and FDA. So it's not that they're zero. And again, anytime we have um, grain or legume products, we're probably going to get some of those uh, mold toxins just because it's the nature of the beast. And we all know that the uh, best food, best grains and legumes go into the human chain, food chain, and then the lower grade products go into pet food. So it, again, would probably be pretty hard to get a zero reading on these. Um, but if you, uh, the mold toxins affect the liver. So if you have an animal with um, elevated liver enzymes, then I would definitely think twice about feeding grains. Um, that doesn't guarantee that they won't have some mold issues. We did test for pentobarbital. Again, we don't have a zero, um, but it got to the lower level of what they could test for. Um, so we don't have an actual number on that. We also tested for melamine. For those of you who are not old enough to remember or weren't in the pet space, back in about 2007, tens of thousands of dogs and cats died from pet food. And it was an ingredient called melamine, which think of those kind of plastic dishes that we all have become familiar with. Those are made of melamine. It has no place in pet food. It's a plastic. Um, but it raises the protein level and it was added to some of the mixes that were put in the pet food of multiple, multiple companies uh, because they didn't know it was there. It took a long time to figure out that melamine was the problem. Um, and that's why so many animals died. And that's one of the reasons why when we see something like this and we are getting so many reports of illness, we don't want to wait for tens or hundreds of thousands of animals to die like we had with the melamine in 2007 and vitamin D in 2019. We don't want to wait that long. But melamine did come back um, less than their uh, lower limit. We did test for vitamin D because certainly that is at the forefront of our mind. Um, the vitamin D3, I think, is a little bit high here, but not something that would be overly concerning. It came up as 536 units per kilogram. I think the upper level is um, 500, so I think. Um, but again, I don't think that it is the issue that we're dealing with. Um, and then we tested for clostridium, Listeria and Salmonella, and uh, the Clostridium 
uh, was less than what their lower reporting limit is, and listeria and salmonella were both negative, which is great. Um, so that's what we have tested for. So what's our next step? Um, our next step is we still think there's something there. And so we have to keep looking. Uh, one of the problems with these first samples that we tested was that they were just off the shelf at a local store and um, were not known lot numbers that had been fed to animals that people were um, posting about. So this round, we do have consumer samples um, from food that was being fed to animals that were either clinically very ill or died. Um, so testing consumer samples that are from batches that are known to have been associated with pets being ill while eating them, uh, we feel that that will give us better results than just randomly picking lots. Um, and we're going to have to broaden our um, list of contaminants that we're looking for. Uh, and this is going to be another $5,000. So um, I, I could be on vacation somewhere for the amount of money I'm spending on this. And I could be getting a lot less flack, a lot less hate mail. Um, but every pet that dies or gets ill makes me physically ill. And I can't stand it. And I, I'll take the flack. I'll take the heat. I'll take the hate mail. Because um, I can't stand seeing animals die needlessly. Bad news, it's going to be a few more weeks um, or longer. We're still throwing darts. Uh, it's going to be a while. So for those of you who are sending me hate mail saying, give me the proof, give me the proof. I'm working on it. You know, finding a lab that didn't have a conflict of interest has taken weeks. Weeks. It's, it's not easy. And we are doing everything that we can um, to try to resolve the situation and keep your pets healthy. So that's kind of the update. Give us time. We're working.